Hello, this is Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we are going to be doing a database tour of the Science Reference Center. In order to access this database from the school homepage, mouse over student support and find the library directly after counseling. The other way to access the library homepage is to directly type in smc.edu slash library. Once you're there, it will ask you if you would like assistance. We have 24-7 chat reference. We don't need that right now, so we're going to say no thanks. There are multiple access points for various resources on this homepage. We have a website exploration, video on our YouTube channel. Feel free to explore that at your leisure. Today, because we are looking for a specific database, we're going to head into Databases. The library databases are listed both by topic by, and by format. In addition, we have a listing of all databases, alphabetically by title, with a short description of what is in each database. I recommend exploring these because different classes will allow you to use these different resources for your research. Today, however, we are looking specifically for science. So I'm going to head back into databases, and instead of looking at all of the databases, we're going to scroll down to the topic of science. Once there, all of the databases that are specific to this very broad topic are listed first. Other databases that might have information useful but are not specifically to this topic will be listed second, and any database that doesn't have anything specific to this topic will not be listed. The second one listed is the Science Reference Center. When we head into that database, if you have not yet logged in and you are using your own device or are off campus, it will require you to log in the same way that you would to Canvas, with your username and your password. Once we're here, you have a number of options. If you have a specific title in mind, you can search publications to see if this database includes the publication that you're searching for. You can browse it or you can look by the title of the publication. You can search by subjects if you have an idea but you're not completely sure how do I spell this. Is that a subject? Not only will it give you your subject, but it will give more specific subjects as well and related subjects. So this is a good way to determine how to approach your search if you're not quite sure. And it gives you images. This isn't just photographs. This is images within research papers, for example. So if you're doing a presentation and you need to include a graph, you can scroll down and find a graph appropriate to your topic. and it will take you to that graph. Make sure, of course, when you do this, that you appropriately cite your source so that you're not accidentally plagiarizing. So if I just want to search and see what information this database has on mitochondria, the first thing that I'm going to tell it is give me full text. I want the actual article, not just information about the article. And then I search it out. And it gives me a variety of things. Anything that says it is a periodical is not academic. It is popular, a magazine, a newspaper, a review, etc. It gives me some videos. And if it is an academic journal, it will tell me so. Now this gives me 479 articles, which is a few too many. So over here on the left-hand side, I can narrow it down a little further. Say what I really want is more current information, maybe within the last five years. I can change this date over here to just give me the last five years. And that cuts it down considerably, down to 70. Also, say I'm in a class where they're requiring that I use academic journals. Over here again on the left-hand side, it gives me source types. I can say I want scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Or I can be even more specific, and I can say I specifically want academic journals. I don't want magazines. 
I just want journals. So in two steps, I've gone from almost 500 to nine. So be very careful how you use your results because when you limit them, you can limit yourself down to zero very quickly. Now say I want to add something to this. I want to add DNA to this. When I research it, it keeps your limiters. It includes full text. It maintains your date limit. But I haven't said give me scholarly journals yet, so I'm going to add that limiter, and that will take out the magazines. So this gives me any article that includes the term mitochondria and the term DNA that is within the last five years, that is the full entire article, not just information about the article, and is a scholarly journal. So when I find one that I like, I take a look at my results, and before I even click on them, they will tell me the title of the article, the research, research team, the name of the journal, when it was published, how long it is. So if I scroll through here and I see something that looks interesting, this, for example, is in Gems and Gemology, so it's very different than the European Journal of Wildlife Research. They will have very different emphases and lenses through which they look at this particular topic. When I click on one, it will give me more specific information and it will give me related subject terms. And this is important because maybe I'm specifically looking for mitochondrial DNA. I can click on that and it will research the entire database and it takes out all of your limiters because for the database, this is a brand new search on a brand new search term. The search term itself is more specific, but the search is broader because you're starting over. So once again, I will tell it, give me only full text articles. That cuts out almost 1,200. Give me only scholarly reviewed articles. That cuts out even more. And give me information only from the last five years. You can change the date right here. And when you click out of that box, it will update it. That took me from 1,400 to 15, just by limiting it to full text for the actual article, limiting it to academic journals, and limiting it to the last five years. Now when I take a look at it, I find current science, I find Southeastern naturalist, here's my original article, I find um, marine fisheries. So because I have now limited this to mitochondrial DNA, I'm not looking at rocks anymore. I'm looking at biological beings. So if I find one that looks interesting, I click on it. And once again, I have all the information that I need for my citation. I have the subject terms that tell me what this um, particular article is specifically about. I have an abstract that not only tells me what the author or the research group considered to be important about this, but this is also whether I can tell if it is a research study or not. By reading the abstract, I can say, okay, did they do things? Yes, they did. The purpose of this study is we collected this. We went to these study sites. We recorded these numbers. What does this do? This result may allow us to expand our information about genetic diversity of an important species. So you can actually tell if your instructor has required you to use a research study by reading the abstract, whether this is a research study or not. But you'll notice, hey, where's the article? The article is over here on a PDF. So at this point, you have options. You can print out the article. You can email it. You can add it to your Google Drive. I don't re recommend adding it to a folder here in this database because when you log out, you may have difficulty retrieving it. So I always recommend either adding it to your Google Drive, emailing it to yourself so it's in your email, or saving it to the cloud. Before we look at the article, you also have the option to get a database rendered citation. So anytime you use someone's research, of course, you have to give credit. Citation gives credit. So if I use the APA, this gives me a, an APA citation created by this database that I can then put into my works cited 
and fix it based on the example given to me by my instructor. This is extremely important because database citations are created by bots and oftentimes they don't necessarily get it correct and you don't want to lose points on your paper because the bot screwed up your citation. Now if I want to save this, um, I can send it to myself. When you email it, you send it to whoever you want to send it to. It doesn't have to go to your SMC email address. It can go anywhere you send it. Do not send it in plain text format because then you, you lose all of those graphs and other information. Instead, send it with a PDF as a separate attachment. All of this information down here will be in the email along with the database's attempt at a citation for you and the article will be attached as a PDF. In addition, change it from standard field to citation format. In this case, I'm going to ask it for an APA citation and that will instruct the database to take that citation and put it into the email. Then I send it off. It lets me know that it has actually sent it. It may take a little while to get to your um, email due to the server. And then I can go back either to my result list and look at other articles or I can refine my search and add things or change things to my search. If you have questions at any time, on the library homepage there is an Ask a Librarian button and that Ask a Librarian button allows you to chat with an email or sorry chat with a reference librarian at any time. Um, if it is during hours when the library is open you'll be chatting with an SMC librarian unless we're teaching a class or an orientation or a workshop. Otherwise you'll be talking to another college or university librarian in the consortium to which we belong. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Good luck with your research and be well.